Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna be talking about troubleshooting the most common elastomeric coupling failures and helping us out from Baldor Dodge ABB is Matt Wolford. Matt, welcome to the program, man. How are you? You're doing great, Tom, how are you? Good, it is good to have you here. And I'm looking around, I'm going, this stuff looks familiar, and um, I I've seen this before. I think I have, you know? What do we got in front of us here? Well, uh, what we've got in front of us are a few different examples of the two most commonly used elastomeric couplings, both tire and sleeve style couplings. Yeah, I know. These have been in one of our videos before, haven't they? They, they sure were, Tom. Elastomeric couplings are an economical, maintenance-free solution capable of accommodating for high amounts of vibration and misalignment. Well, it sounds like a great combination of features, and from the look of things, I am guessing this is not how we want our couplings to look, right? No, definitely not. This is not how we want our couplings to look. Let's start by taking a look at examples of the three most common failures, then talk about the best practices to avoid failures and keep equipment running successfully. Okay, and uh, just a reminder to everybody out there, you know, when you're doing this kind of stuff, don't forget to wear your PPE. It's always important, right? You do that, don't you, Matt? Absolutely. Okay, PPE is always number one, whatever the job calls for. Okay, so we're talking about solving problems, maximum Optimizing uptime, it's good stuff. So what do you want to look at first, Matt? Well, successful operation of an elastomeric coupling actually starts right when you open the box. Why don't you give that a shot? Really? Just the box? Fine. Here, hold that. Okay, that's it. We're good. I know, I have successfully opened well, the box of the coupling. <laughs> actually, you forgot something, Tom. What? The best way to eliminate coupling failures is simply making sure that you properly install the coupling. Manufacturer's instruction manuals are an excellent resource for this. Yeah, so following directions. Who doesn't love directions? Uh-oh. <clears throat> uh, all right, you got me on that one. All right, what are some things to look for that would indicate that a coupling was not installed properly? Well, there's a few signature failures to look for. Our first example is of a burst keyway and a sleeve coupling flange. The area above the keyway has the least amount of material and is particularly susceptible to failure. Failures here can indicate that the shaft keyway dimensions weren't within the manufacturer's allowable range or could be the result of overly aggressive installation methods, also known as the bigger hammer approach. Oh, that's the one I probably put in there. I think I might have done that a few times. <laughs> okay, keyway damage is one. What else have we got, Matt? Another common issue is incorrect bolt torque. This can result in an elastomeric element actually being ejected when in operation due to insufficient clamping force in the flanges. Always make sure to install hardware to the specified torque values using a properly calibrated torque wrench. Well, that just sounds really bad. I mean, follow the instructions, understood. So what are some of the other reasons that elastomeric couplings would fail? As you know, the two primary functions of a coupling are to connect shafts and to transmit rotary power known as torque. Mm -hmm. Well, torque overload is a condition that can cause failure, where the amount of torque applied is greater than the amount of the coupling's design capacity. So the coupling failed because it was undersized. It just sounds like we need a bigger hammer, man. Well, actually, Tom, in this instance, you very well could be correct. When you see evidence of a torque overload, just compare the torque rating of the coupling in service versus the torque of the application. If the coupling doesn't have a high enough service factor, it's time to select a new coupling with a higher rating. In other words, check to make sure that your coupling is the correct size for the application. Now, are there any other ways that couplings fail? Just one, and that's excessive misalignment. All coupling manufacturers publish limits for angular, axial, and parallel misalignment, which define the ranges in which the coupling is capable of successful operation. When these limits are exceeded, couplings are pushed past their design limits, and the possibility for a premature failure is significantly increased. Yeah, you know, I remember covering the three different types of misalignment before. Uh, now, how would someone be able to tell the difference between them? Failure modes for each of the different types of misalignment can be determined by analysis of the element, examining the location and nature of the failure. For example, let's take a look at a failure due to excessive axial misalignment. Remember that axial misalignment is when two shafts move closer to or further away from each other. For example, let's take a look at this, these sleeve coupling elements. This sleeve coupling element shows what it should look like. However, this sleeve coupling element shows evidence of a failure due to excessive axial misalignment as part of the element has been completely sheared off. Now you said there's different types of misalignment. Show us what those look like. Of course. Angular misalignment, which happens often, is measured as an angle between two shafts. It's the result of bent shafts or improperly mounted bushings or motors. 
This tire coupling here failed due to excessive angular misalignment, with evidence of the failure visible where the element bonds to the clamp rings. It doesn't look like that one would have lasted much longer. Okay, what can we do to avoid these failures due to excessive misalignment, Matt? The most critical step during installation or maintenance is to ensure that your shafts are properly aligned within the manufacturer's recommended limits, making sure to check for angular, parallel, and axial misalignment. Misalignment failures are often caused by a combination of the different types of angular, parallel, or axial misalignment as seen here. So this, this would be all three. You, you sure we can't repair that one? I don't think that one would have lasted much longer. Shh, boy, you guys just throw away stuff and you don't even use it. Anyway, no, that's good information, Matt. I mean, certainly helpful in diagnosing and most importantly, preventing elastomeric coupling failures. Now, Matt, I'd love to do this again with metallic couplings. Can you come back? I'd love to. Thank you, Matt. We appreciate it very much. That was Matt Wolford. He is with Baldor Dodge ABB. Hey, if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, don't forget to contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. Talk to your representative, and they'll be able to help you out. Uh, but hopefully the information that Matt gave you here today will help you with your practical application. Uh, as indicated earlier, make sure that you have on the proper PPE uh, for whatever you're doing, for whatever the job calls for. If you're putting a coupling back on, it may call for more than just safety goggles, so make sure that uh, you wear the proper proper goods. Also make sure that you look for other Motion Industries how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Hey, and check out our Motion Industries YouTube channel as well. Thanks for watching today.